<clears throat> there we go. Okay. Uh, a warm welcome to all of you. Good morning, everyone who joined. Uh, Harrison, Prabhakar, Anita. Morning. Um, let's pray and then we get started, right? Okay. Um, we're going to just go ahead and um, just pray in the spirit, praying tongues for some time. Um, let's just um, be refreshed, be strengthened, be edified. The word of God says that uh, when we pray in the spirit, like we are edified in the inner man, in the inner person. The word of God says that uh, seasons of refreshing come from the Holy Spirit, from the presence of the Lord. And uh, we also, you know, pray the mysteries of God. So let's go ahead and just do that for some time. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank we do not know what we should pray for as we ought to pray for. But uh, what God says in Romans, um, we, we read that uh, Romans chapter 8, that uh, the Holy Spirit makes intercession for us with words, um, with groanings. So just continue to pray bold, continue to pray strong. Um, for those of us who are, I, I, I do believe that most of us uh, do pray in the spirit, but for those of us who are yet to start, you know, yet to begin praying in the spirit, um, just believe God, right? So uh, I'm just going to pray a simple prayer. And um, if there's anyone here uh, who's not yet started praying in tongues, um, so I'm just going to pray a simple prayer and say, Lord Jesus, baptize this person, baptize them with the Holy Spirit and with fire. So uh, you go ahead and you pray the prayer and say, Lord Jesus, baptize me with the Holy Spirit. Right? Um, baptize me with the Holy Spirit and release your gifts in me. And uh, especially you can just pray, asking God, you know, release the gift of tongues in me. He's the giver of the gift. He's the one who baptizes. So I'll do that. Okay. Lord Jesus, I pray that if there's anyone who is uh, yet to um, uh, have an encounter of the baptism in the Holy Spirit and also the gift of tongues, I pray, God, that you would just fill that person right now with the power of your Holy Spirit. Lord, and I say, be filled in Jesus' name. Be filled in Jesus' name. And Lord, I ask that, uh, Lord, we ask that release oh god your gifts of oh father god and especially gift of tongues um, in that person of father god and uh, you know if there's anyone like that here you know you just go ahead and take a step of faith you know what is that step of faith you go ahead and uh, pray out speak out the syllables right and um, and like we've studied, the gift of tongues is, uh, is it could be earthly language, it's a heavenly language, um, and it, it is uh, a language that you do not know. So uh, the words may not make sense. Let that not keep you away from uh, speaking it out. You know? Many times it acts as a hindrance. So um, just think of it as syllables, as sounds, and uh, go ahead and, uh, and voice those sounds that are forming in your spirit. Um, and these utterances given by the Spirit of God, but we are the ones who speak it out. So go ahead and speak it. And and, um, and those of us who already speak, continue to pray out bold and strong. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.
So thank you for the sword of the spirit, which is your word, God, that you're giving for each and every one. You've given for each and every one. May we be faithful to use the sword. May we be faithful to wield the sword. We bless your name, Lord. We bless your name, Lord. We bless your name, Jesus. We praise your name, Jesus. Yes, Lord, we lift your name in this place, Father God. You be glorified in this place. You be lifted. Be enthroned, O oh Lord. You are the King of kings and you are the Lord of lords. Yes, Lord, we acknowledge your Lordship, O oh Father God. We acknowledge your Lordship, O oh Father God. Oh, we just come under your authority, Lord. We come under, Lord, your Lordship, O oh Father God. We come under and we submit, Lord. We, we submit ourselves, O oh Father God, everything, Lord. To you, Father God. Oh, Rumo Sekendi Rereme Shiba Papa. Here, Rere Rumo Sendi Rumo Siri Rumo Karande Rumo Shikere Rumo Karande. Thank you for washing us with your precious blood. And this morning again, God, we, we just re dedicate, oh Father God, everything about us, Lord. Uh, and we present ourselves, our members, God, as, um, Lord, to you, Father God, and the one, the Holy One, the Righteous One. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Oh, we give you praise and we give you glory even as we commit these two sessions into your mighty hands. In Jesus' matchless name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. <clears throat> Welcome back. Um, just wanted to know, is there anyone who 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 is... Um, Know, who's yet to start praying in tongues and you maybe you started praying in tongues maybe um okay let me be specific maybe there were a couple of words that you spoke or uh, anyone like that or does everyone uh, okay um charles you want to ask a question or you want to say something go ahead charles i want to say something i want to say something uh when you said that we start praying in the spirit uh, a fear came into my heart and uh, I said, can I? And mm. then uh, it, it continues, you can't. And then when you said, just start mm. pronouncing those syllables and I started, mm. I started. And wow. when you prayed the, the prayer, uh, like as in God to, to baptize us with the Holy Spirit and fire, mm. I felt a very very big cool breeze, cool air flowing in me in my veins and i started wow. bubbling out to the words and it, it's oh. working i believe wow. it's working. <laughs> oh, praise god <laughs> praise god hallelujah so glad to hear that uh, charles so glad yeah just continue speaking it out continue you know you there might be so many questions you know uh, uh, and i mean that was my experience uh, first time i started praying so many questions so many doubts you know is it me is it god is it me is it the holy spirit and um, and uh, i think um, you know the <clears throat> Uh, the the publication that pastor the book that pastor had written the booklet rather about uh, the baptism of the holy spirit and praying in tongues um, is so useful uh, very practical and uh, when you have the time just go through it and uh, i'm sure it'll be a blessing to answer all those you know questions that we might have. but praise god so uh, god is so faithful um, you know he's uh, he's impartial and he blesses and uh, i'm so glad to hear that um, yeah testimony Praise God. Anyone else? Um, yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. So let's uh, let's uh, start. Let's just uh, uh, continue with uh, where we left off last class. Right. We were looking at um, the restoration of the ministry of the evangelists. Right. And um, we were looking at uh, several people who um, who God used to bring back. The ministry of the evangelist to bring back the service of the evangelist and uh, uh, and like we were share, you know saying that these were ordinary people these were people who had uh, you know who had limitations of uh, the understanding of god you know who didn't have it all uh, you know the way we way we understand right now uh, but they were faithful right they were obedient and they went ahead they, and uh, started uh, doing what god had put in their hearts right the, they they had a passion for the lord jesus and they had a passion for 
the people, you know, because they had experienced Jesus, because they had experienced in their spirit um, the 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 gospel and their changed destinies and changed lives really. And some of them came from, you know, if you, if you read, they they came from religious backgrounds. They came from cold religious backgrounds, cold formal religious backgrounds, and uh, they met the Lord Jesus, and their lives were changed, and they had such a passion that they. They uh, they just went out. They knew that they as uh, you know as God put in their hearts, or they came to know that here are these people who do not know about Jesus. You know, here in this part of the world, um, they do not know Jesus, or in my own city, they did, they do not know Jesus. They started um, going out and sharing uh, about uh, Christ, right? And um, and so we see that. Uh, the restoration of that ministry office coming back, where people went out and shared. And, and we see many names. Um, in fact, uh, th this is uh, chapter 4 and uh, page 11 in your notes. So we see many names listed there, very many movements listed there, um, like uh, you know the Bogomils or the Hussites and uh, the Methodists and the Presbyterian Baptists. And all these, we see that they were God would raise up a person or a person would... Um, um, you know, respond to the gospel, and God would use that person uh, to to take the the the, the uh, good news of the gospel out. Right, and uh, several names that we see there: George Whitfield, uh, John, and Charles Wesley. And I think, like uh, sharing last time, you know, last, uh, last session about uh, special specifically about Charles and John Wesley. John John Wesley, uh, you know, he uh, both of them ordained in the Church of England, and they and they went about doing ministry across continents, right? Um, in England as well as in in the, in America. And uh, but something was missing in, in John Wesley's, and he met this um, group. This Moravian uh, um, and uh, from Germany, I think, from Herrenhut. So they, uh, they, you know, uh, there's there's an instance where uh, they are traveling by ship, and uh, and John Wesley is there, and and he hears them singing and he hears them praying to the Lord as if he was there with them. So for him, it was a it was a new experience, right? So uh, so it it. it uh, the, the kind of intimacy they had with the Lord and the, the way they spoke to Jesus and the way they sang and worshipped, you know, really touched his heart. And there began the journey of him actually receiving the Lord as a savior. And then after that, there was no turning back. They just went back with a passion and fire. And uh, um, the churches said, no, you can't preach. You can't preach this salvation by faith through, uh, salvation by grace through faith. They, you know, <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> Excuse me, and but but they went out. They they took the gospel to the. They started preaching to whoever would listen to them, and it was in the in, in the in the priests. And, I mean, in the in the streets, and they faced a lot of persecution. Um, but um, you know, they went ahead and did that. And so they had many contemporaries. Like one was uh, uh, Edward Perrinet, uh, who was also who fellowshiped with them, and uh, uh, who. Um, you know who was also influenced by them, and uh, and we see several other names. Um, so what I um, really want us to do is um, you know read through, and I think the previous class that you had, uh, church uh, history and missions, is also uh, some one, something that is uh, uh, the uh, especially the book uh, that you're using, um, the compilation of all the you know the the right from. Uh, uh, from the book of Acts, the early church, and then uh, talking about revivals and visitations, and um, and and so it lists out many, many names, many, many people whom God used, uh, you know, in evangelism, like right? in the ministry or the office of the evangelist. So it'll be very useful for you to, uh, for us to go through the go through those. Um, I know it's it's a lot of a uh, lot many names, a lot of details, but it's it's really good to read that to see how um, there was restoration brought in in the restorative moves of God, how you see this ministry office uh, being restored, right? Uh, especially after that season that the church went through and um, where it was just a shadow of how it uh, how it used to be. But, but, you know, I'm sure if you're studying that, you, you realize that even before the Reformation, that there were people God would uh, raise up and like Jan Hus and uh, and others, uh, Wycliffe, who was there, uh, probably uh, I think around 200 years before 
Martin Luther uh, came in. So he preached justification by faith, um, uh, like what Martin Luther would, uh, you know, preach. Um, so uh, we see that happening, and um, and right down to our contemporary times, where uh, people, um, the message of the gospel being shared, right? So. Um, so here's something that we can do, okay? Uh, just do a research on how the gospel came to your country and to your city, okay? Uh, I'll put it up in the, in the stream. So just go back, uh, simple details, like uh, just maybe you, you can check out in the net, you can maybe talk to other pastors in your town or city and find out, you know, when did the gospel, how did the gospel first come to my land, okay, and I think it's it's interesting, and we should be thankful for uh, for God for using those people, and and really praise God for those people who were faithful to the call. You know, they did not have much; they uh, probably um, did not know much, but one thing they knew that uh, salvation is found in Jesus alone. And if a person does not have Christ, then he or she is lost in sin. And uh, and uh, the the destiny of that person is uh, an eternity eternity without God, which is um, a, you know an eternity eternity being separated from God and death and so on. So they just knew that. So they they took that and they came right. So um, I know many many uh, cities are uh, represented here. Many countries are represented here in this class. So go ahead and um, and. And uh, you know you uh, do a research, uh, do some reading, and find out uh, when was the first church established. I think that would be uh, a good, uh, uh, you know, way to start. You know, uh, when was the first church established uh, in the city? Now that could be, uh, that may or may not be uh, <clears throat> accurate in the sense uh, maybe it was. Um, you know, it was a, uh, it, it was, uh, it was a Catholic church, or it was, you know, some other denomination. But, but whatever, you know, let's find out. Okay, how did it start, really? How did the uh, gospel come, right? So, maybe next class you can have more information. And simple things like, you know, when, uh, who was it, um, and uh, how exactly did they do it, right? Uh, so you could find out. Okay, so. Um, <clears throat> Maybe if it's India, north of India, south of India, you know, wherever, or whichever country that you are in, okay, um, just find that out and let's uh, uh, let's share it. Maybe take a few um, uh, few few minutes to do that in the next class, right? Okay, so today um, let's move on to a uh, chapter, uh, the next chapter which talks about uh, some practical aspects or practical keys for doing the ministry of the evangelist. Okay, so here are, okay, here's the ministry office. We've studied about the ministry office of the evangelist. We've studied about, uh, um, you know, uh, how the Lord Jesus uh, ministered as an evangelist. So we see some key factors which are there to uh, the ministry of the evangelist. So that gives us some understanding. Okay, an evangelist, okay, this is what the person does. This is how the person ministers. This is the message, the central message of the person. And this is uh, uh, this is how the person, you know, the person's audience and, and so on. And and uh, and what follows um, the message, the demonstration uh, of power and demonstration of the power of God, right? We, we, now we know all that. So let's look at some of the practical keys, you know, when it comes to doing the uh, work of ministry. What are some things that, you know, maybe God is calling us uh, or one of you or some of us, some of you to do to the office of the evangelist, okay? So here are things to, some things to keep in mind. And uh, here are some reminders, okay? So uh, let's look at that. Let's look at uh, chapter five, which is uh, page 13, okay? So here, and, and all these factors, are all these keys, practical things are, uh, you know, what we see in the Bible. So it's really a biblical scriptural pattern, okay? a scriptural model. Okay, the first thing that we see is, of course, um, you know, we looked at the person, of course, um, the first thing is the, the message. Okay, the message is the gospel, 
the message is the gospel which is preached the content is the gospel which is preached so um uh, it is very clearly described in 1 corinthians 15 and verses uh, 1 to 3 okay, let me put it here in the chat uh, Hey, so uh, what does it say? 1 Corinthians 15, uh, Paul declares, he's testifying, this is the gospel which I preached. And he goes on to you know, give some key um, indicators or key factors uh, or key points about the gospel. Okay, now let's read that. Moreover, brethren, I declare to you the gospel which I preached to you, which also you received and in which you stand, by which also you are saved. If you hold fast that word which I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered to you, first of all, that which I also received. Okay, That Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. And that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. So this was the centrality of the message that uh, Paul preached wherever he went, the gospel that Christ died for our sins, he was buried, and he rose again. So uh, so in a nutshell, you know, the, the gospel, this is what it is, that Christ died for our sins, he bore our sins, he, he was buried, he, and he rose again. Right. So uh, he was. Uh, the it doesn't stop with Christ dying for my sins, but it also continues. He was buried and he rose again, so that my sins uh, were taken away, so that I was justified by him. Right. So uh, so uh, Paul preached that message that formed uh, the gospel, and the the gospel and was also uh, uh, what 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 he preached. Uh, the, what the evangelist preached was also the the cross, the message of the cross. Okay, so that we see in one Corinthians chapter one and seventeen onwards. Um, one Corinthians chapter one, <coughs> verse seventeen. Um, so, um, okay, this is only from only. Let's read uh, up to twenty four. Okay, 1 Corinthians 1, 17 to 24. Okay, so um, uh, this is what we read. For Christ did not send me gospel, not with words, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of no effect. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world through wisdom did not know God, it pleased God through the foolishness of the message preached to save those who believe. For Jews request a sign and Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preached, but we preach Christ crucified to the Jews a stumbling block and to the Greeks foolishness. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. So, uh, well, the gospel was the message. Um, the gospel, the, the evangelist preaches the gospel. The evangelist preaches about the cross, which which is part of part or the central the theme of the gospel that Christ died on the cross. And uh, that this message is the power of God. Okay. So Paul says that uh, this message of the cross is foolishness, right? It's foolishness to those uh, who are perishing. But when we believe and when we receive it, really, those who are being saved, it is the power of God. This cross, this message of the cross, the, the fact that Jesus died and what he carried upon himself when he died and what happened because of his death, what happened because of that uh, sacrifice, 
it releases the power of god to break certain things in our lives uh, actually if you look at it uh, there are certain silent um, proclamations of the cross of the message of the cross right um, one of which is water baptism you know it's a, it's a proclamation of uh, the believers identity the believer identifying that i died with christ i was buried with him and i rose again with him and uh, and a believer is testifying to that and it's a proclamation it's a it's a it's a, it's not a verbal proclamation you know but that act is a powerful and loud proclamation a proclamation without words if you want to call it that but it's so powerful and another one is the the lord's table or communion right when we when we take the bread and we drink from the cup testifying to the body and the blood the body of the lord jesus which was nailed to the cross the blood of jesus that was shed for us on the cross testifying to the uh talking about pointing to the message of what happened on the cross that act of sacrifice right the death on us again a powerful declaration every time we take communion together as believers uh, or maybe even alone um, we are testifying we are declaring we are proclaiming that this is um, this is what is happening okay uh, maxon saying that my voice is breaking okay is anyone else having the same uh, challenge it is fine okay it's fine now so it was breaking okay um so sorry i don't know what's um maybe i just uh, i think it in between for few seconds was and then it it's fine now oh it's okay it's okay fine fine so i think uh, something to do with my cable thanks thanks for pointing that out thanks max yeah okay so um so the so what a baptism and also um, you know uh, communion pointing to this powerful um, act that happened on the cross right? pointing to the cross right so um so we see that it is this message is actually the power of god so we cannot shy away from talking about the cross the message of the cross uh, and uh, of course god does some foolish foolish and what seems to be foolish you know this whole thing of talking about what happened uh, pointing to what happened uh, a couple of millennials ago millennials ago and uh, that changing and that impacting life here and now you know that's the that's the power of the cross that's the power of the message of the cross that's the reality spiritual reality um that uh, uh, that we see you know it's so tangible that this is what is changing lives okay so um there's no need to shy away there's no need to uh, take another approach right? talk about the cross has to feature um because the thing is like um, you know many times uh we see that when we talk about the cross because of people's perception about the cross or um you know about christians in general and people sometimes uh, you know you you see that uh, reaction that they don't want to hear um they don't want to uh, hear anything they don't want anything to hear about the cross but but really we cannot um hold back from sharing that Uh, otherwise it will just become a maybe a self help kind of a message or a motivational kind of thing uh, a feel good message but it will lack power you know it can interesting of uh, messages most interesting of um, presentations but without this it lack uh, power because people need to know what happened on the cross people need to know uh, the full gospel and uh, so that they can put their trust they can put their they can extend their faith and receive it and then see for themselves the life that is changed right so uh, the message of the cross very very uh, important um yeah, sure maxon you can uh, try that uh, and then see if it uh, if it helps right okay Okay so the message of the cross 
then we see that um, uh, Romans 1 and verse 16, Paul again reiterating that uh, the gospel is the power of God. Okay, the gospel is the power of God. Um, this news, or this good news about how what this came and carried our power, um, our sin, our sickness, uh, our shame, our curse, everything on the cross, and he died and he rose again, and and by that uh, one act, you know, he uh, that one sacrifice, he he. Um, uh, that what but the offering of that one sacrifice you know he has perfected forever those who are being perfected so uh, so that Paul is saying Romans 1 and verse 16 he's saying I'm not ashamed of the gospel I'm not ashamed of this for it is the power of God to salvation hey uh, Charles you have a question go, go ahead please um yeah, you can go ahead and ask if you I think you've not unmuted your mic. No, thank you. Um talking about the power when it had yeah. does to... not have the gospel and the, the feel well things. There is there is a preacher uh Mm -hmm. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, you, you're saying something I about a preacher. About the feel well messages, and the, there is one preacher I have seen who who never uses the Bible and he talks. He's an American preacher. I've forgotten the name, but mm -hmm. he speaks. And Something mm -hmm. like ten, something like Austin. Uh, he talks, and he people mm -hmm. are very many following him. Is it a powerful message when when mm -hmm. he does not use the Bible? I've never seen him okay. open the Bible, and I don't know is is his is his messages uh, one of the powerful ones? He has a very big, large crowd of people, and he teaches very well messages. Yeah, that was my inquiry. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. So, um, yeah. So the thing is that um, you know when we look at it, uh, well, uh, well, we don't know the full picture. So obviously, I, I cannot comment. But the thing is that if I I want to see lives saved. You know, there is no holding back from presenting the gospel. Um, well, people do take certain approaches by saying, okay, first I want to, you know, uh, build bridges and uh, uh, and get to know the person and uh, let the person know about Christ, know about what is possible, know about, uh, you know, uh, the fact that he's a, he's a friend and he loves. And yes, all that is true. But without this, you know, there is... No change lives, right? Because because we we're, we're trying to do something on our own strength. We're trying to better our lives by putting in uh, uh, some putting into practice some principles, some precepts, which is which is brilliant, which is good. But my spirit is not does not uh, come alive or is not born again. Uh, you know, still, okay, and I make that decision. So so that's the thing. Right. So, uh, like, we don't. I, I don't. I really don't know. You know what uh, uh, about this, uh, this particular person that you're sharing with? But, but the fact is this: that uh, the reality is that the message of the cross is power. The gospel is power. So, in you know, you know, in in the message, you know, that, that needs to be presented. The truth of that needs to be presented. People need to receive it, and then they will experience the power of that. Right? Um, yeah. So that's. Uh, that is why that is how I would respond. Okay, so um, hope that helps, Charles. So in Romans one, verse sixteen, Paul says, "You know, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation. It is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes." 
for the Jew first and also for the Greek. So it is, so which means that, uh, you know, if you, if you understand it, that without the gospel, um, gospel, uh, the, the, the gospel carries the power of God. It is the power of God. Now, the power of God is required for a person's life to go from death. To, right? It's we, we're not talking about, um, you know, just a person um, bettering their lives, improving their lives. We're not talking about just uh, a resolution, right? Oh, okay, I need to go on a diet and change this, or I need to, you know, it's, it's a matter of life and death, right? And it takes the power of God. It took uh, Christ dying on the cross to release that power. Um, so it takes the power of God to break what we are held by, which is um, held by sin, you know, the power of sin. So it takes the power of God to break that. So therefore, we need to preach the gospel. And Paul is saying, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Because this is the power of God. This is the real deal. This is the power of God. And that is what will uh, break the power of sin and change lives. Right? It is simple. right? It's a simple message. It, it just takes believing. So Paul, Paul saying, you know, I'm not ashamed because it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes or anyone who believes. Right? So I receive this simple message. I, I believe in it. And I experience Power of God being operational uh, in my lives, in my life, right? And uh, and uh, uh, yeah, f starting from uh, you know my sins being forgiven, a whole lot of other things as well, right? Which we're going to look at right now. Uh, the word that is used there is sozo. You know, I, I think you would have studied that uh, uh, earlier. Also, S O Z O, and it's uh, pronounced sozo. Like uh, how you'd say pizza, so sozo, and and this word uh, is used in in several scripture, several verses, and it um, and it used in different contexts. So we understand the 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 importance of salvation because uh, we we look at it in one angle and we say, okay, uh, forgiveness, okay, but sozo. Is involves a whole lot of other things as well. As well, it's it is not just forgiveness, but it also deals with healing. It, and it's not just forgiveness and healing, but also deals with uh, us being set free from the oppression of the devil. So it's it's deliverance as well. So it's not just healing and deliverance, but it also deals with uh, preservation and safety. Right and general well-being. So we see that, then we are able to appreciate the the gospel even better. Right? We are also we are able to appreciate salvation um, even better. Okay. So let's look at uh, some of the scriptures that uh, uh, where sozo is used. Right? So, okay, uh, of course it's used in salvation. It is used uh, to denote uh, uh, forgiveness of sins. So. Um, Matthew chapter 1 and verse 21. Let me uh, put the verse here. Matthew chapter 1 and verse 21. Um, and she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, and he will save his people from their sins. So, who is speaking? Who's saying this to whom? Anyone? <clears throat> Matthew 1, 21. Okay, and this is the, uh, to Mary. Uh, and uh, to I, Joseph. Yeah, so this is actually to Joseph, right? So Joseph has this dream, and the angel of the Lord appears to Joseph in the dream. And uh, and this is the message that she will uh, that she will bring for the sons, that Mary will bring for the son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Okay, so so this is what uh, the, the word sozo is used there for the word save, that he will sozo his people from their sins. So here he will save them from their sins, he will forgive their sins, he will bring them out of their sins. Yeah, and the same uh, word we see in Romans, uh, sorry, Acts chapter 4 and verse 12. Um, Acts chapter 4, verse 12. 
says, nor is there salvation. So that word salvation, uh, uh, important, nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Again, so so. So salvation in no other name, and there's no other name given under heaven by which we must be saved. So we see that. So forgiveness of sins, Sozo refers to that. Um, also healing, like healing of sickness, bodily healing, uh, again, is uh, is the word uh, Sozo, right? Uh, Matthew chapter 9 and verse 22. But Jesus turned around and when he saw her, he said, Be of good cheer, daughter. Your faith has made you well. And the woman was made well from that hour. Okay. So your faith has made you well. And the word sozo. So you see that um, sozo refers to physical healing, bodily healing as well. So the Lord is saying that your faith has made you well. And uh, he's, uh, it's about that a woman who had a, an issue of blood uh, for 12 years and so on. And she reaches out in faith and, she, and the Lord is saying, be of good cheer. Your faith has made you well. Your faith has, in other words, your faith has saved you. Your faith has made you well. And, and this healing that has happened in your body, um, you know, you received so so. Right? You've received salvation. And your faith has made you well. So it refers to physical healing, right? Um, let's look at another scripture, uh, Mark 6 and verse 56. Okay. Mark 6 and verse 56. So wherever he entered into villages, cities, or the country, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him, that they might just touch the hem of his garments, garment. And as many as touched him were made well. So as many as touched him, reached out and touched him, they were made well. Again, so so. Okay, so they were saved. They were healed in their physically in their bodies. Um, and they were so so. Right. So um, let's look at one more verse. Uh, James chapter 5, verses 13 to 16. James 5 is talking about the elders gathering and praying. Uh, so, yeah, James 5, 13. Is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing psalms. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the sick. The Lord will raise him up, and if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. And then goes on to say the effective, fervent prayer of a righteous person avails much. Right. So, um, so we see. Uh, well, it's about physical healing, and and that's great news, right? And what about deliverance? Okay. What about coming out of oppression? from the work of the enemy or from being imprisoned by uh, the enemy. Okay. So that also, Luke 8, verse 36, they also who had seen it told them by what means um, he who had been demon-possessed was healed. Okay. And uh, refers to, again, Sozo. Okay. So we see that uh, forgiveness of sin, we see physical healing, and we see deliverance, the same word, sozo, been saved. So the Lord, when he when he saves people, you know, by no other name, uh, by which there's no other name given by which we might be saved, it refers to all this, right? It, it refers to all this. Of course, forgiveness of sins is, a, is an important part of it. It's, it's a, I would say, the most important part of it. But it also has all these elements of, of being healed, of being delivered. Jude verse 5, but I want to remind you, though you uh, once knew this, that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed those who did not believe. Saved the people from the land of Egypt. 
um, out of the land of Egypt, referring to slavery um, and what they were held by, and they were delivered from it. They were set free uh, out of that bondage. And Egypt always uh, referring to that, right? Um, the, our old life, an old life of bondage, uh, an old life of uh, of sin and slavery to sin. So here we see that they were set free and being having saved the people having delivered the people uh, out of that bondage. Okay, so um, we see a deliverance, uh, which is also uh, you know, a, a big part of, of Sozo. Okay. Then um, safety, physical safety, preservation, that is also Sozo. So Matthew 8 and verse 25, Then his disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us. We are perishing. Lord, save us. We are perishing. And, and, they, and they use the same word. Lord, save us. So, so, we are perishing. And and what is that incident? Anyone? Matthew 8. What is this, uh, this incident that caused the disciples to come to him and, and, and say, Lord, save us. We are perishing. Anyone? Just on the boat, uh, when they were in the boat, and the boat was, uh, in, and there was a storm. Yeah, exactly. So um, they got into the boat, the disciples followed him uh, into the boat, and uh, a great tempest arose on the sea. Verse 24 talks about that. And uh, the boat was covered with waves, but he was asleep. Verse 25, the disciples went, woke him up, and said, Lord, you know, don't you care? Save us. We are perishing. Right? And the Lord, uh, of course, awakes and says, you know, why are you why are you fearful? Oh, you of little faith. And faith and sozo, again, being connected there. So here, the context is physical safety. Lord, we are about to die. We are about to drown. The boat is about to capsize. And we are about to drown in the waters. And uh, they're saying, you know, save us. Lord, save us. We are perishing. So physical, uh, you know, safety from physical harm and danger. Okay, again, so and so. Right. Let's look at one more uh, scripture, and then we'll, uh, uh, we'll just take a break. Okay. Second Timothy 4 and verse 18. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, the scriptures are there in, in your references are there in the notes. Um, Second Timothy 4 and verse 18, and the Lord will deliver me from every evil work and preserve me for his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. Right. So again, he will deliver me from every evil work and preserve me for his uh, heavenly kingdom. Uh, to him be glory forever and ever. So again, the word uh, sozo is used there. So we see that, um, you know, this uh, amazing word, and uh, and that is what the gospel is about. Okay, that is what the gospel is about. So the gospel is not about, um, uh, you know, uh, getting a ticket to heaven, right? It's not about getting a ticket to heaven, and uh, uh, it's about life here as well. Right? It's it's not just about the hereafter. Yes, of course, you know, our destiny is changed. Praise God, our destiny is changed, and you know, so. It's not about just waiting to go to heaven, but it's about life here as well. So salvation covers that. And, uh, and what a great revelation, the fact that it is about physical safety, that it is about deliverance, that it is about healing, physical healing, and uh, you know other aspects of healing, like mentally, emotionally. Um, and it is about forgiveness of sins and salvation. As we, so, so we see that word sozo, that salvation. For he will save the people from their sins. So that is what the angel said. That he will save. You should call his name Jesus and he will save the people from their sins. He will save, he will sozo the people. Right. Uh, so that forms a part of the gospel. It's the evangelist preaches. Okay, so we'll, we'll take a break. We'll come back at 11.